everybody. Hi, guys. Well, from a little too hot Salt Lake City, Utah. <laughs> Thank God I'm Atheist. The podcast. I'm Frank Feldman. And I'm Dan Beecher. And coming up on the show today. Oh, my God. Dan. Oh, boy. We've got an enigma of a uh, governor here in the state of Utah by the name of Spencer Cox. Yeah. And uh, he's... Uh, He's got. A, I think most people know that the West is in a historic level drought. And yeah, it's he, not good here, people. No, 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 no. We are all going to die. <laughs> I don't literally know everyone <laughs> west of the Mississippi. We're gonna die. I, I'm not sure it's gotten quite to that point yet. I'm pretty but, sure. It is. Um, Spencer Cox is. Uh, he's throwing a hail mary to kind of try to. Yeah, he's got to, a to solution, you guys. He's almost got, he's a hail got, mary, literally. But yeah, um, right. <laughs> All right, but anyway, we're before, not Catholics here, Frank. We don't I do hail know, Mary. I know, it's yeah. uh, it's a bunch of our fathers. Yeah, um, right. All right, before we get to that, though, uh, we have to uh, talk about some stuff that happened this week, Dan. Oh, uh, and I'd do like we have to, to. We have to start okay. talking about this stuff. I know. Uh, I'm gonna share a little story here about a pepperoni pizza. <laughs> And a uh, Jewish football, high school football player. This f- this feels like the setup to one of the weirder children's story, like storybook stories. <laughs> in the there picture once book was section. a pepperoni pizza named Mitch. Um, yeah. No, um, he uh, high school football player. Okay, who was late to practice. And his coach, coaches, I guess, uh, forced him to sit in the middle of the gym and eat an entire pepperoni pizza in front of all the other players. Um, If he didn't do it, his status on the team was going to be in jeopardy, and his teammates would have had to run extra drills. Now, it took me a minute. I was like, oh, pepperoni's made from pork. Yeah. Uh, Which... It's it's not pork. It's pepperoni, right? Like, <laughs> like I've never once in my life actually looked at the stuff and thought of what animal it could possibly come from, right? Because it probably doesn't actually come from an animal, right? For the <laughs> oh, most part, it, it comes from pieces of animal. <laughs> anyway, um, the school board, after hearing. Uh, the uh, lamentations of v- uh, very, very, very upset lawyer father of the young man. Um, <laughs> Ooh, you picked the wrong Jew. <laughs> um, has uh, summarily dismissed uh, all seven football coaches uh, and banned them from ever being employed uh, in within the school district again. Whoa! Um, it was a five-zero vote. Uh, they were like, "No way!" Uh, so it that that makes it clear that like this wasn't just they happened to have a pepperoni pizza and they didn't know that the Jewish people keep kosher. Well, and the according to the father, um, who you know, he's upset. He's he he he's they keep they keep kosher. They've kept kosher since. 2013 according to him as a okay. family um and they they sound pretty devout and so they're upset they're upset on that level sure but not for nothing they've got a great lawsuit on their hands um well, yes there's that too <laughs> <laughs> that's that is a lawyer comment not a jewish comment by the way everybody exactly. just to clarify uh, where i believe frank was going with that <laughs> yeah of course um of course it wasn't a jewish comment jesus I'm just, christ i'm just saying uh we, <clears throat> we, we're not saying that jews are more litigious than anybody else no just, no equally yeah. litigious they're they're americans they're, they're plenty americans. litigious as, yeah, exactly. as we are a litigious people we are um but uh no he he feels as though um everybody would have known that his son doesn't eat pork right because they're they're you know, obviously a I mean, kid, a kid like in that kind of position, the, the, the adult supervisors, they, they're going to be told, Hey, listen, like if you're ordering a meal, you have to make sure there's a 
kosher option, right? But also, um, the kid would have said, I can't eat this, I'm kosher. I believe so. Yeah, I, I, the, the article doesn't actually mention that. But here is the deal. Like, I was, like, reading this, and I'm I'm upset because these coaches are just dicks. Right. Um, but to be honest, I think it's the, the humiliation of, like, the, these... Like any kid forced to go through like some dumb ritual in front of everybody, right? As punishment, that's what would make me mad as a parent. I would think, right? Like you that's... don't like the idea of uh, of uh, hazing. No, hazing. I think is pretty pretty shitty, right? Yeah. Um, I, I I think we're, I think, you know. I don't, that shouldn't come as a surprise to anybody, but that's that's what I would be upset about. Like, obviously, I don't care about the whole pork issue, um, but like that's that just like really started to bother me. The more I kind of walked away from the story and thought about it, I was like, "No, fuck that shit. Fuck those coaches and this like, you know, oh, this is how this is how you you teach young men to be or boys to be men, you know? Right? And uh, it's like, you know boot camp type stuff well you f- you fucked up so now the whole regiment has to you know right. the whole platoon has to go do whatever and so hey, that's how that's how you train men right that's how you that's how you train up a a a, a, a boy and turn him into a unfeeling emotionally confused <laughs> completely unadept uh man a man that's how that's, you that's that's how you that's get what, a man yeah 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 no absolutely um anyway that's my take on it i do love though that the father keeps calling it a pork pizza and in, in all the quotes he goes i made him eat a pork pizza and i'm like there's no such thing as pork pizza <laughs> it's just pepperoni pizza yeah come on <laughs> uh, what's really funny is wait till somebody wait till our listeners go to italy and order pepperoni on their pizza they, oh, they are not in for a surprise pepperoni. no well Actually, I'm guessing every Italian restaurant in the country, every pizza restaurant in Italy knows if they order a pepperoni with an American accent, put sausage on, not green pepper. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not what it means. It means green pepper. Anyway. Yeah. A bell pepper. Anyway. Uh, so uh, I'm going to I'm just going to go through a quick timeline here Oh. Uh, and see. And, and, and then we'll get to, to my story now. The timeline goes like this. Uh, long about the year, we'll call it 350 CE, uh, the the Catholic Church kind of codified itself. Something like that. Mm. And then uh, they did horrible things for thousands of years. And then uh, in, 19, uh, in, in like 2001, the Boston Globe broke the story about uh how the catholic church had all these had this sort of rampant sexual abuse and they just kept moving priests around to try and sort of sweep it all under the rug and everything and this, i uh, love this timeline though dan you like yeah 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 I, I, <laughs> you, you did jump I worked over real hard on it so <laughs> nothing I'm else happened this, in the catholic church I, yeah so <laughs> between so 300 that, common era and yeah 20 whatever so so anyway (laughs) uh somewhere in the between that that you know 300 and something and uh like 2001 they developed this system which is everywhere basically like everywhere you know we've reported on it from every corner of the globe if you have a diocese you have pedophiles you have priests yeah. abusing their uh their their position it's their way and harming the children it's, it's just what they do right and then the next thing on on my timeline my really well drawn out timeline <laughs> uh is that the vatican uh changed their rules so that uh so that that was less easy a little less easy mm. okay and that happened this week oh boy it's it, like literally it took till now for them to change the rules a little bit it's how many it, it's you know 40 years 
since things really started to come to light and then you know 20 years since the the boston globe broke their thing and you know it's been i maybe the movie had to come out before they really <laughs> took it seriously maybe maybe spotlight had to come out before uh before anyone at the vatican knew, oh well if mark ruffalo's involved i guess we should take this seriously <laughs> well I, okay so i just want to make sure that we're all clear on this yeah so n- uh, now it, the catholic the, it is it is wrong for a catholic priest to be a pedophile <laughs> apparently the, they don't now they, apparently okay. now they frown so on they, it they now <laughs> they they just wrote these rules they're just okay cool well, no, what they've done is so now they've made it so that like they there's a they've taken away the discretion of the bishops to some extent and mm. said that the they the, if a priest is caught doing certain things they are to be defrocked oh. they are to lose their job as priests okay they are they are done uh which is great that right. is a that is an actual step forward we'll see if it actually happens Right. Who knows? But also, it's it is a uh, quote unquote crime. They're not talking about like reporting anybody to the cops, but right. like within their organization, it's a crime to cover it up too. So, oh, the bishops are kind of on the line on that as well. As well. Uh, it's okay. also nice, and this is nice. Not okay for them to uh, abuse uh, adults either. So, oh, things, so they, you know, okay. They now have a firm stance on on abuse. It's uh, not 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 cool. Not cool. pretty 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 firm. It's uh <laughs> it's it's a lot less squishy than it was. <laughs> and we'll see how well they implement it. But uh, 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 one thing's for sure, they're not implementing it right away. You wouldn't want to jump in feet first on something like this. So everybody's right. got until December to get it all to get all of their pedophilia out of their system. Oh, good, 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 and. So it's basically love the pedophile, hate the pedophilia. Is no, that where they? No, no, no. I don't. I don't think that's it. Um, they would. They would never. They would never treat pedophiles as badly as they do gay people. Um, but no. It, so Fair so enough. yeah. For I got. I'm gonna give them props. Like they, they definitely took some strong positions on this. Uh, this is much needed change that they should have done that should have been obvious hundreds or thousands of years ago. Yeah. Like this is the bi- the no brainerist of no brainers, like the easiest call to make ever. But I'm gonna give them partial credit for actually making it. Hmm. All right. There was a there's an amazing um quote, if I can find it, from from one of the guys inside the thing, Archbishop Iannone, uh, who said that, here's here's how he put it, and it's just, come on guys, phrasing. Uh, this is from the Vatican News website. Uh, he said that in recent years, quote, the relationship of interpenetration between justice and mercy Jesus has at Christ. times been misrepresented. Jesus Christ. Are you serious? <laughs> You're gonna use the phrase interpenetration? <laughs> When you're talking about this issue, you fucking idiot. Freudian that... slip, Dan. <laughs> oh, my God. He's, he's got something on his mind. That, that like, would oh. make Freud's cigar explode. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. All right, Dan. Oh, yeah. boy. Louisiana. I've uh, heard of it. They, their legislature has just approved a resolution um, that uh, will... Uh, order the, the, the flags in the state uh, flown at lowered to half mast uh, every January 22nd in uh, to mourn the the innocent children who've oh, lost their lives due to abortion oh my uh, god <laughs> the children <laughs> they're not even calling them babies any the fetuses right. babies now, anymore now, now they're, they're children. fucking children um, they're calling it the Day of Tears. Oh God! <laughs> Can I just say, uh, those innocent children could also have grown up to be adults. So you could say mourning the innocent adults, yeah, who were who were the victims of 
of be, of having of abortion. Been aborted. I know. Well, apparently, that was kind of the motivation of one of the sponsors of the bill, who um, whose mother had been. Uh, it's one of these stories, right, where it's like the doctor told her that she needed to abort, mm. and uh, and the mother just she didn't. She couldn't. She couldn't do it. Uh, she and she so, knew better. And so now there's a, a, a pro-life, so-called pro-life uh, state senator, I guess, who, uh, or maybe she's in the house. I don't remember which one she is in this story. It doesn't really matter that much. Um, and that, so she's sharing this, this horrible, uh, what if, what if? And it's like, oh, uh, <clears throat> who knows, yeah. sweetheart. Um, but, um, yeah, they... Uh, they're joining a, I don't know if they're the first state to do this, but there's actually an, a 501c3, that's a nonprofit organization, called the Day of Tears uh, that is promoting this across the nation. They want Their goal mm. is to have every flag in America flown at half-staff uh, on January 22nd every year um, in, in remembrance of and in honor and in mourning for the over thir- uh, 63 million lives that have been lost to abortion. I, um, I may have to install a flagpole out in front of my house just to not lower it for that I, day. I absolutely, this Dan, I had the same thought. I was like, <laughs> we need to start something where people make sure on January 22nd they are flying the flag all, all the way, the way to the top. Like, tippy, <laughs> tippy, tippy top. No room for any misinterpretation there. Um, and then yeah. below it, a Planned Parenthood flag. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Like, and if they don't have a flag, then they they need to get one. Oh, uh, you can just put their logo on something. They, <laughs> they won't get mad. As an, uh, sort of a, a hobbyist vexillologist, Dan, um, no, that's like the worst kind of flag. <laughs> Don't just put your logo on a flag and call it a flag, Dan. I can I can is... I can flag whatever I want to. I can make a flag out of anything I want. Yes, you can. A you pork can. pizza can be a flag, Frank. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh boy. Well, uh all right. Everybody, let's let's put on our, our grown up seatbelts for just a second because this is this is the story you you probably encountered it because it made international news it's a big one and it's rough yeah uh uh the timeline on this one is just that as soon as white people came to the americas they were awful to the already here residents of (laughs) this uh uh, of this continent and they continued that pretty much indefinitely so uh the the latest story comes from uh, British Columbia, out of the Kamloops Indian Residential School. Now, if you don't know the phrase Indian Residential School, it refers to uh, schools in Canada. Their 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 equivalents existed all over the United States as well, where they would basically kidnap Native American children, First Nations children, out of their households and forcibly put them into schools that were meant to uh, anglicize them, to to whitify them, uh, to indoctrinate them into the obviously superior European culture. And the way that you know that it's superior is that they kidnapped children. Uh, So they did this for a long, long time, and uh, surprisingly... They didn't choose to treat these kids very well. And by the way, this was done initially by the Catholic Church. This this, this was a, an, a, an imperative of the Catholic Church. And then it uh, it got governmental funding and governmental backing. And other and, denominations joined in, right? And uh, Yeah. Yeah. Boy, you don't want to miss out on an opportunity <laughs> like that. Once you see the Catholics <laughs> doing it, you want to make sure that you're not you're not missing out on the, all the fun as well. So. So uh, the Catholic Church ran most of these things, um, but they were government funded, and uh, and so this particular school, look, they estimate that literally thousands of children died at these schools 
uh, all over the country. Uh, yeah. But they never knew really what happened to them. But at this school, they apparently used, um, I'm not sure what the technology was, some sort of sonar or radar uh, to look down into the ground on the grounds and found the remains of 215 children. Oh, boy. Who were buried there unceremoniously, unmarked, My some God. as young as three years old. Oh, God. Who had died because of the wildly abusive yeah. environment that they were forced into. Um, there are plenty of people who are alive today who saw these schools, uh, who were part of it, who who witnessed their friends just disappearing sometimes. Jesus. And not knowing anything about them. Uh, a lot of these people never saw their parents again. A lot of these people, uh, they weren't allowed to speak their native languages. Hmm. Um, it was cultural genocide. Uh, and just in case anybody's wondering how long ago this was, the last government-funded residential school in Canada closed in 1996. Oh, God. So, uh, so wow. yeah, that's... Uh, that's a delightful piece of our history here in uh, in North America. So, hi everybody! <laughs> fun fun stuff happening. Yeah, here yeah, that was a North big America. story this week. I I heard more on the radio this week driving around than I than I wanted to know. You know, yeah. it's one of those things where it's like, well, you know, it, I sometimes have the impulse to like just put some music on instead, and I'm like, no. You, you you have to listen to it um yeah. but yeah i mean you are to allowed to also like yeah don't you i know. mean don't turn off this podcast just because <laughs> we're telling you that you have to listen to us <laughs> no but like there were some harrowing stories of some people who survived these schools and oh uh, yeah they, they were malnourished yeah. they were beaten they were verbally sexually abused, abused yeah. sexually abused yeah yeah really 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 awful stuff all right dan yeah um Okay, I don't have to make too hard of a shift here. Thank God. <laughs> um, the uh, uh, this is about the uh, Texas abortion ban, which passed uh, the state legislature uh, back in May. Mm. Um, so we're going on a month uh, from when uh, the governor, uh, that's uh, Governor Greg Abbott, uh, signed. Oh, he's a peach of a fellow. Boy, isn't he great? Um, signed into law. Uh, their uh, heartbeat act the texas heartbeat act which is you know these heartbeat bills um target abortion uh after uh the the the, the heartbeat of the fetus is uh, detectable right which is about and to be the, clear, the six week mark right to be clear there's not even a heart there is just like a little uh pulsing thing happening but it's not a heartbeat in in any way that you would recognize an actual heartbeat. Fair enough. Fair enough. And actually, that's probably, that is a good point to make. Um, I guess you could call it cardiac cardiac activity or something like that, that. That's actually I'm lifting that from this article. I just saw that. Uh, but anyway, um, the there's a, there's a number of these that are kind of going around and uh, being they're being challenged in court and everything at the moment. Um, the Texas bill is a little bit different. Um, it's in no way a statement bill. They actually worked really, really, really hard, uh, to, uh, try to make it stand up, uh, in court. Um, it's probably the best crafted of them, but mm. some of the things that it does, uh, that are really insidious, um, and that again are different from the other bills out there. Um, it, it gives private citizens not the state uh the authority to enforce the ban um through li uh, civil lawsuits right. um and it doesn't um matter where uh the, the 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 person um bringing the lawsuit resides they don't have to live in texas they can live anywhere in the united states oh great um and uh they will be able to sue any doctor in texas that they think might be in violation of this new law um, and they can also, and this is the really rough part, 
Um, they could also sue anybody who, quote, knowingly engages in contact that aids or abets the performance or inducement of an abortion, including paying for or reimbursing the costs of an abortion through insurance or otherwise. Um, so this would reach out to nurses, rape counselors, uh, family members who might just be helping out. Um, vo- there are volunteers who will help out in, in, in these things, you know, driving women to a clinic. Um, there's the people who, like, if there's, um, you know, some mo- crowd out in front of the abortion clinic protesting abortions, um, there are people who will sign up to, like, help escort women into the the clinic and whatnot and all of these people could be targeted under this law uh which is really really disgusting um yeah i I mean mean, they're they're making it really really kind of scary right what they're what they're doing is uh they know that the courts are stacked now in their favor yep they're pushing through all of these ways of banning. It's just to ban abortion. That's all they want to do is ban it. So, like, they say it's a heartbeat law. They say you can't have an abortion before after six weeks after it has a quote-unquote heartbeat. Well, most women don't even know they're pregnant in that time frame. Right. So Yeah, no, that's true. It's an effective ban. It will probably hold up in our Supreme Court at this, you know. It's so... Uh, move out of Texas, everybody. Yeah, no kidding. Um, or rather, but, but that's not what people are doing. People are moving to Texas in droves. Well, and maybe that's and the other thing. That's, I think that's what the, the there seems to be a last ditch effort in a couple places in this country for the for the very conservative uh, state governments to push through all of the nasty. Right. Yeah. As they see the demographics and the political landscape of their states changing. Um, yeah, that's the thing about Texas. It's actually turning blue. So yeah. I'm wrong. Move to Texas and Absolutely. fucking vote these assholes out. Absolutely. Yep. That's crazy. It's it is time. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right. Well, I'm gonna close us off with some good news because we've been very depressing for the last two <laughs> stories. So uh, I am going to. Uh, to talk about mm. one Mr. Rick Wiles, who oh, boy. Uh, we love him on the show. Oh my God, you've heard his uh, voice if you if you listen to the show for any length of time, you've heard us play his clips because he yeah. is a horrifying this is, person. This is a man who who looks like the grandpa that the kids cry when they hear, hear that they're going to have to go visit. Um, <laughs> this is he gives uh, you so mouth Rick Wiles. Or, uh, he gives you uh, throat lozenges and calls them candy. Right. Would you like yeah. some candy? And, and he's so mean. He's just grumpy and mean to them. <laughs> uh, anyway, this is a man who, let's just, I mean, his resume includes open uh, and very and very clear uh, uh, anti-Semitism. Yeah. Including, uh, including use, like public use of the word, what did he call, uh, uh, oh, a Jude d'etat? Isn't that what, is, wasn't that his phrase? Yeah, I think you're right about that. Yep. Anyway, uh, this is a man who is just deeply racist, deeply homophobic, and has been spreading misinformation about COVID-19 since before it was cool. Uh, and he, so so like a few weeks ago, he was very clear, and I, did we play it on the air? We may have played it. He was very clear that he was not going to be taking the covid vaccine yeah we he was that. going to survive the genocide right because because the, the covid the covid vaccine was a genocide yeah that was being kill inflicted everybody, which is insanity well i mean i don't have to say that it's just fucking insane right it's, the man yeah, is he's, insane he, he lives in such a fucking ridiculous alternate universe uh, right and and what's nice about it is that he's spreading all of that good misinformation and everything right. so that's that's very delightful. Well, I am going to compare that to a more recent uh, tweet of his, mm. uh, because he he got the COVID. Everybody, <laughs> he literally like his his company, True News, mm. literally started sending around 
they first they tweeted that uh that flowing streams so true news is i guess part of part of a a, a larger company called flowing streams or maybe okay. that's the name of the ministry i don't know but it, but they tweeted a thing a few days back that said flowing streams is experiencing a sudden cluster of flu bullshit and covid yes it was just COVID, you guys. It's yeah. not flu. There have been almost no flu cases in the country this year. Right. But uh, if anybody was going to catch flu, it was going to be these ding-dongs, right? Right. But no, they just got COVID. Okay. Uh, of, so the Flowing Strings is experiencing a sudden cluster of flu and COVID among some employees and their relatives. Rick Wiles made the decision tonight to close the offices and studios until, until a TBA date next week. Our team needs to tend to sick family members. Please oh pray my. for your True News team. Then they tweeted uh, a few days after that, urgent request. Please be praying for Rick Wiles right now. Please <laughs> repost so that there's an army of people praying. <laughs> because Homeboy didn't just get it. He hospitalized got it. Oh, him. God. So uh, wow. I am just pleased as punch about that. <laughs> uh, he seems to have survived, which Damn I'm it. less pleased about. But it will um, be interesting to see what he says now. Like that's like that's actually the bit that I'm I'm and like anxiously waiting for is I need to know what what this has done to shift, if at all, what he has to say. Oh, are you like, kidding me? And, and which which direction does the needle go? Right. He dug himself too deep to change anything now. <laughs> Here, here's what he tweeted uh, just a few days ago. Okay. Thanks to Jesus Christ. Oh, God. I survived the CCP, that's Chinese Communist Party. Oh, God. The, the CCP COVID genocide on American people. Oh, Yeah, it's my just God. in America, Rick. That's, that's the only place COVID got. I will be released from the hospital later today. My breathing is returning to normal. Pneumonia defeated. The worst is over. My deepest gratitude for all the prayers. I will share more later. God. Uh, here's the thing. The COVID, now COVID is the genocide. Yeah, he should. The vaccine was there the genocide. Go. Yeah. And the vaccine's not from the Chinese Communist Party. So... What's the real genocide here, Rick? Is it the everything? It's all. <laughs> they're just coming every. F there's so many fronts. There's so man. many genocides. They're they're just they're coming competing, for him. They're literally competing genocides. One of the genocides <laughs> is there to kill the other genocide, <laughs> and then we. I want to be the one who genocides you, not them. Oh golly! Not, not the Chinese. It's got to be me. It's got to be. It's got to be uh, 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 Bill Gates. Yeah. genociding him Pfizer. instead of the Chinese. Pfizer's coming for you. This is the thing. These people get to say completely conflicting things and not be called on it. I know. How is this okay? If we, if you and I say completely conflicting things, we will get emails about it. Yeah. And we will respond to them and we will try to either uh, you know rectify our position or justify it in some way. Anyway, we, ha we get called out. But man, Rick Wiles gets to say things that are just completely contradictory and everybody just, fl yes, he's, he's so right. He's so right. It is a Chinese conspiracy to commit genocide you only should, in America. You should email him. I, t I tweeted it. Uh, I, I did tweet yeah. at him. And just be uh, like, you know, but, but I, more like pose like, you know, Rick, I'm just confused, right? Like, Rick, I as as a as a as concerned a, listener, I yeah. I thought I knew what the genocide was, and now <laughs> now, now you're now it's a new genocide that doesn't now, seem to jibe with the other one. What's going on? Can you explain it to me? I don't know which one is who's my enemy here. Yeah, yeah, because I I can't because my name it's 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 a Jewish last name, right? So <laughs> that's true. He would he would just hate on me instantly. You, yeah, so. I I can sneak one by him. Maybe. <laughs> of course, no, neither of us has to use our actual name. Anyway, uh, if you would like to uh, call us out on a contradiction, please mm. feel free to do so. Podcast at thankgodimatheist.com. Or call and leave us a voicemail. The telephone number is 424 666 
8442. We'd love to hear from you. It's got the and devil right in the number. <laughs> and stick around. We've got more show coming up for you. Hey, Dan. Yeah. Now's the time on the show when we get to listen to a crazy. Yeah. <laughs> We do. And we got and a this good one's one a, today. This one's a peach of a guy. <laughs> Y'all may remember uh, Yai, Milo Yiannopoulos. Oh, boy. Uh, right at the beginning, sort of before and right at the beginning of the Trump uh, era, he was one of these guys who, like, there were the darlings of the alt-right movement who claimed to be a part of a group traditionally associated with liberal thinking uh, and they were turning their backs. So, they, you know, when you've got a black dude who wants to talk about how crap the black community is, they love that guy. Mm. If you have the Jewish guy who loves to talk about how, you know, how the Christian, uh, the you know, the, the evangelical Christians are all very correct about their way of thinking. Boy, they love that guy. Right. And then they had their gay. Ah, and they're gay who love to talk about how, how he was gay, but how, you know, far right wing thinking is still the correct way to think. And that was Milo. Mm. Milo he uh, uh, and then he got canceled because he was a bit too much for a uh, literally everybody. <laughs> uh, but he has found a way to resurrect himself in. And that is through. Ex gayness, he has uh, he has doffed yeah. his gayness, <laughs> as, uh, which as is perfect. easily done. You know, yeah. oh yeah. He, I mean, here's proof. You know, all you have to do is proof. just you know face a lifetime of obs- of uh, living in obscurity right. uh, after having a, a nominal amount of fame. Right? Like, how do I? How do I get rid of my gayness? Right. So uh, he's going to talk <laughs> oh, to us. There's but- the motivation. But first, I'm going to paint a picture, which is that he still has uh, the worst bleach blonde hairdo you've ever seen in your life. He's in a he's in a salmon colored blazer. Well, yeah, uh, I mean, he he's not ex gaying very well. He hasn't yeah. committed to the bit. I think <laughs> myself. Uh, anyway, uh, here's here's one of the benefits, one of the many benefits, Frank, and you should consider this oh, okay. of going ex gay. Okay. When I made my announcement, the first thing that happened, which will make you laugh, but it's true, is dogs stopped barking at me. I am one of those people. You know, everyone's got that friend that dogs always go nuts around. You're familiar with this, right? You, you got pets? Yes. Yeah. Right. There's always somebody that no, dogs. My, my dog doesn't bark at you. That's I, I keep my dog bark in there. But hey, crazy. Bark at you, but that's okay. okay. Uh, he like uh, he barks. Yeah, he so, barks so, at people. You must have some work left to do. Um, but he didn't <laughs> bark at Milo. That is true. <laughs> But but I was always one of those. I know this sounds so stupid, but this is just how I think that God reveals Himself to us, right? This is this is just my experience of it. I was somebody who invariably, without exception, always used to make dogs go crazy. So we have a friend who's a political candidate down here, right? And her campaign manager has two of these little yappy dogs, and they would not stop. I couldn't be in her house for more than twenty minutes because it would drive everybody crazy. Um, even growing up, we had Alsatians, we had black Labradors. Um, they just didn't like me at all. But dogs don't bark at me anymore, and it happened almost overnight. Now they seem mm. to quite like me, and that sounds like it's the stupidest thing in the world. I think yeah. he's right. You know, I think that is the stupidest <laughs> thing in the world. <laughs> My Frank, God. The dogs will stop barking at you, Frank. Because dogs only bark at gay people? I don't, like, I don't understand what this is all about. What? I mean, here's the, here, the part of the story that I find believable is that dogs hate Milo Yiannopoulos. <laughs> That's the part of the story that I totally believe. Uh, and I, I just I mean, love I how think... much the, the, the dumb people on the clip also are like trying to support him in this wild and crazy claim, right? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, my dog doesn't bark at you. Yeah. Like, oh, I, think, I think maybe one of the things he thought straight people do is like carry around beef jerky with him. And then he just learned that he could just give the dogs beef jerky and then they would <laughs> stop barking. Wait, you don't just carry beef jerky with you? Ah, see, you you gays don't know anything about my culture. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. 
Oh, well, oh, we uh, let, let's get off of Milo. Oh, God, what a sad, pathetic life that is that he that he has crafted for himself. Oh, anyway, you got to whatever it is, you got to find your way into the into the conversation, right? Yeah. Any, any get get your fame back. Yeah. By all means, uh, by any means necessary. Yep. Well, we had some folks uh, call into us, write into us. Uh, I think we should start with uh, maybe we should. Maybe maybe we should start with uh, Donnie. Should we start with Donnie? Let's start with Donnie. Uh, Donnie has has called into us. Hey guys, Donnie here. So when I was listening to episode four ninety four, um, I was listening to a listening about the study uh, done on Christian kids that go to college, and I have to say that I'm going to have to side with Frank on this one because my experience was that I went to I went to college, you know, in the early two thousands right after I had left Mormonism, but I did a bunch of social science work and I didn't really learn a bunch of critical thinking skills. And as you know, I got super deep into woo about that same period. Uh, and then it wasn't until I went back to college in my thirties and did a hard science where I kind of learned a little bit more, you know, there was just a little bit more focus on critical thinking and critical examination and evidentiary support where like I started going to my woo groups and they would make these wild claims like, you know, the redwoods had been alive since the dinosaurs were around. And I knew that to be factually false. And then it started to make me question other things. And that critical thinking ability really did start to detangle all of my belief in that woo stuff. And so I think it really does matter like what your focus is on, because if you go into the hard sciences, I agree, it's not really about the facts that you're taught. But it's about the scientific method and that you're always looking for evidentiary support to support the conclusions, you know, or not even the conclusions, but to support your hypotheses. And I think that that's meaningful. So um, anyway, just my take. Um, anyway, again, love you guys. Love the show. Thanks, Don. Evidence. <laughs> <laughs> Evidence is for suckers. Well, I have to say he did one thing right. And it's, it's the way to get your, uh, your voicemail on the show. Uh, which is just lead with I side with Frank on this one, like that. That <laughs> that will that will get that'll work every that, time. That will. Have, I, that I do will, the screening. I screen the voicemails. <laughs> at, at that point, Frank will overlook the fact that it that you were apparently in the middle of a hurricane outdoors uh, while you were talking to us. Yeah. Sorry about the uh, the audio there, guys. But uh, but yes, Donnie, I think you've made a, a very valid point. Yeah. Um, and 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 yeah, I think I think obviously learning hard sciences and having someone standing over you going, no, 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 you have to look for the actual evidence. You can't just make a claim. Right. Uh, that's a that's a good thing. Yeah. Th those critical thinking skills are how you say critical. Anyway, um, Philida wrote into us. Uh, Philida says, "Hey guys, when you mentioned the decline of Southern Baptists." I think you missed the true reason for their membership problem. Ooh. It's bad karma. <laughs> they pissed off the god of tipping. Oh. Now, this, is, this isn't going to make a lot of sense for our international listeners, but those of you who have been to the United States uh, know that when, when you're served at a restaurant by a server, they, they literally get... The way that they get paid is that you have to tip them. Uh, and, and that's that's how the only way that they make any real money they they get paid a, a pittance otherwise yeah um it's a terrible system it should go away but that's yeah. how it is standard uh, 15 to 20 percent everyone 20 percent should probably be your minimum it should be but i know that that's a, a hard sell when people are tipping less than that so yeah so i say tip 20 at least hit, guys at least hit 15 bare effing minimum you're right about 20 though it should be 20 yeah and if it's really good 25 percent, whatever go go up from there you just made anyway, some people uh, angry <laughs> what's that <laughs> there's some people who've never heard that before and they are now just like what what would never tip 25 percent. yeah right yeah oh my god be generous people uh anyway um philida goes on i find the uh, i find that odd since they believe so strongly in another mythical being uh, in the 80s, I worked two blocks from where they held their annual convention every other year. Oh, 
You poor, poor oh, person. Oh, wow, yeah. Uh, the servers at the local restaurants hated I when bet. they came to town. I bet. Many of Southern Baptists would not leave an offering on the table after being served. Oh, God. When I hear about when I hear anything about Southern Baptists, this is what I think of. That is that is not unique to Southern Baptists. Uh, no. r- religious people all over the place find excuses not to tip, uh, including the very popular I give the Lord 10%, why should I give you 15? That's a <laughs> That's a clever one. <laughs> I'm not asking for 15% of your fucking income, dickhead. <laughs> just the the, the, just the bill. The bill. Here. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, Mormons are also notoriously bad tippers. They bring their entire giant family into a restaurant, yeah. order the cheapest things they can find, and then even though it's the cheapest things they can find, still leave a pittance of, of a tip. It's a... Uh, it's a pathetic way to live your lives, everybody. Uh, if 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 tipping is the custom, fucking tip and be generous. Yeah. Oh, but yeah, it doesn't surprise me at all that the that the leaders, the the guys, and it's probably all of these leaders in the Southern Baptists that are making a fortune. Yeah. Just doing great in their lives, and uh, and still refuse to have the charity that their own God called on them to have. It's not charity to tip, first of all. I'm saying the charitable disposition. Oh, sure. Because it's not required of you to tip. No, but nobody's forcing you you to. When you walk into a full service restaurant, there is sort of, there is an understanding. Yeah. There is a social contract, perhaps even, right? Of like, this is how it works for better or for worse, right? Nobody loves this system. Much, you know, much less the actual servers who have to live in the system, right? Yes. Like, you and I have both been we've servers. We've both waited tables at some point in our lives. I was terrible. You were good at it. I was I was pretty decent. I did yeah. it for a number of years and I did okay. Yeah. But nonetheless, um, it's rough. It's rough. It's tough work. And, and, uh, and yeah, you get somebody who leaves you next to nothing or nothing. And it's like... That's brutal. Yeah. That is brutal stuff. Yeah. All here's right. here's a, a hot tip for all you servers out there though. Uh be grumpy. I don't know why, but it gets you better tips. <laughs> I was always super affable and very, very fun and upbeat. My tables all loved me and I never made as much as anybody else. What are you saying? I'm saying I'm, be grumpy, grumpy to your tables. Don't be rude. <laughs> I don't think that works. Just be gr- no, no, there's actual there's like there have been studies that have been done. Yeah, but that is a that that's that's a tough balancing act. Right? It's a, like you have and to it's have a shit the way to live perfect, your life. Don't actually be grumpy. The perfect personality for it. Yeah. To, anyway, to, hand, to pull off grumpy table uh, side. But anyway, uh, we, uh, let's listen to Terry, shall we? Let's do. Our friend Terry has called into us. Yeah, responding to our conversation about titles and honorifics. Right. Yes. That we, we had uh, last we talked, week. We, yeah, I think. we talked about should we honor. If someone comes to us and says, hey, I'm Reverend Joe, and whatever. Anyway, uh, Terry has some firsthand experience she'd like to come to bring to bear. Hey, Frank and Dan, it's your pal, Reverend Dr. Terry Daniel here, and I'm calling to comment on your piece about titles, which was brilliant. Um, ah, people who have bullshit titles from bullshit schools really piss me off since I spent 10 years and $150,000 in student loans at legitimate accredited universities to earn my doctor title. I also have a reverend title, but I never use it because it seems stupid and meaningless, and it loses all its value when there are thousands of people running around calling themselves reverend because they got ordained by some woo-woo online school of some kind. Uh, through my work as a university teacher, I've known many interesting, free-thinking, brilliant religious scholars, and some of them were priests, monks, rabbis. Uh, even though I might disagree with their theology, I actually have a lot of respect for them because they did the work to earn the title. And of course, certainly in the academic world, having the word doctor in front of your name carries a lot of weight. It's done wonders for my career. Now all I have to do is figure out how to pay off the student loans. 
Anyway, that's my rant. Love you guys so much. Thank you for all that you do. Bye. Well, thank you, Reverend Doctor. Reverend Doctor Terry. Yes, it's a. Uh, <laughs> oh God, how how would it make you feel? Because you know there are those people. Terry, obviously, you don't you don't love your your Reverend as much as 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 some, but like there are people who go to like rigor, you know, Yale the, the, theological school or whatever, school and they get divinity, their, I believe, yeah, or whatever it is, yeah. and you know they have they work their asses off you know in an uh, uh, academically rigorous environment and then some guy walks up and he's like oh you're a reverend cool i'm a reverend doctor too i got my degree from the barbados school of 15 minutes and you're a, a, a pastor uh yeah. so yeah what that's a that's some bullshit right there um but yeah i i you know what are you gonna do sorry terry uh, you, you share the same credentials uh, from different institutions as a bunch of ding dongs. Uh, so there you go. Well, do we have some folks to thank, Mr. Frank? We do indeed, Dan. We actually have uh, three new patrons on Patreon. Nice. Um, we have uh, two new deacons. We have Michael and Kyriakos. Uh, I hope I said that correctly. I'm, um, I, I'm guessing you nailed it. <laughs> and we have a new priest uh, by the name of Katie. And so Excellent. Th- thank you Amazing. so much to the three of you. You um, now all have the magic powers bestowed upon Frank and I when we were 12 and or 16. So yeah, congratulations. So much power. Um, and I, I will point out, two of the three are international listeners. Um, and uh, so... Come on, U.S. Yeah, yeah. Where, where but I'm gonna you? say, hey, international. <laughs> let's keep let's keep making well, let's them keep, look like idiots the, here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and uh, if you'd like to join them, of course, you can do so uh, by going to thankgodimatheist.com and clicking on the support tab. There's a couple different options. You can go to Patreon or use PayPal. Um, either way, you're really helping us out. Uh, we have a goal at the moment to hire an editor for the show, and so um, we're working on it. We're we're, we're not too far off. Yeah. So if you could help us reach that point, um, it could free up um, my time, which is rapidly disappearing um, these days. So um, that would be wonderful and wonderful support of the show. Um, and as always, Dan, we have our top donor to thank, our Lord and Savior. Austin! Hey, Dan. Hey. So, um, you, we're, we're going to talk a little bit about some uh, Utah political figure, uh, namely our governor. Uh, but the, the conversation is... is much more broad than that because it's really a conversation about uh religious people copping out on on uh actually doing things and just praying about things yeah it's it's ding battery at its (laughs) finest (laughs) and nonetheless uh one mr governor spencer cox uh who is an enigma to me oh my god he is hard to get a beat on i i i do not know if i like him or not at I this know. point, I know he he clear. I I feel like there are moments when I can see him maybe playing the Utah politics a little bit. I think a lot of how um, COVID was handled and mask mandates and all that kind of stuff was. I I honestly think just kind of getting a sense of some of the stuff that he said that he probably in a more moderate, you know, politically politically moderate state, he probably would have been a little bit more aggressive in some of the response, um, but. Um, as so, I'm I'm willing to kind of be like, okay, I, I see that. I see what it was he's up politically against. expedient for him to let a bunch of people die. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but that that is the politics of, of the know. state of Utah. So. I know. <laughs> I don't approve of it, but it's true. But then he does things like, um, for the he's he is the first Utah governor to ever have a pride 
LGBTQ plus pride declaration for the month of June. Yeah. Right. Which he just did. And, 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 and speaks about the, um, the LGBTQ plus community, um, in ways that I never would have expected to hear from a Utah governor. Yeah. Um, and in Starting a way that seems way back not when to... he was, when he, when he was Lieutenant governor. Yeah. And there was the, the, the shooting at the club in Florida. Yes. At the gay club in Florida. Yeah. I remember and this. he came out with this beautiful, impassioned speech that no one was asking him to make. No. And 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 just and was like re it was moving mm-hmm. and it was very clearly sincere. Yeah. Uh and because it, he did not need to. Right? That's yeah. that's where you could see the sincerity. It's like he was made he was that was a political risk. Yeah, it's turned out to not be a risk at all because nobody in the state seems to really care. At least not enough people to like make it matter. Yeah, um, Mormons he... are, are passive in their hatefulness, not uh, <laughs> not as aggressive as down in the South or whatever. Exactly. Um, but um, this week, um, oh my God, this week he uh, released a video online. The background Uh, is, uh, sorry, we should jump in and just say, we mentioned it at the top of the show, but mm. the background is, we're in trouble in this, in this state. The entire West is in trouble. But, but, and and Utah is a desert Mm -hmm. and uh, we don't have a lot of water. No. At the best of times. We don't, like, yes, uh, for those of you who look at a map and go, what do you mean? You're right next to a giant lake. We are right next to a giant lake. (laughs) It's drying up too, but it's a salt lake. And yeah. it's not useful to us. It's right there in the name. Right. L- lest you think we have water, it's right there in the name. Right. Um, not drinkable. Um, yeah. And uh, so, we, yeah, we get all of our water from snowpack, essentially. Um, and, it, and if and we don't have was, a good snow year, we don't have a lot of water. So. It was a disastrous year for snow this year. And, and it's been a series of off years, right? Right. Like, there have been a- occasional decent years, whatever, but, like, it, the, the, the trend is is long-term sustained drought in the western in the entire western united states um it's a like a 20-year drought at this point so we've all been waiting to hear like what is going to happen with like like frankly we're to the point where it needs to start being like you can't water your lawns you can't you know what i mean like people need don't flush your toilet every single time yeah, like Unless it needs to get to the point where it's like maybe I don't know how many days can you go without a shower before you uh really offend those around you. Like it needs we need to be taking concrete steps. But boy, asking a Utahan, a libertarian, don't fucking tell me what to do, blah blah blah, Utah, uh to to do anything to help anyone but themselves. Yeah. Seems to be a non a non starter these days. Yeah, the greater good is not really a concept, <laughs> right? So, he's come up with uh, what is obviously a, the best plan solution, possible. which is uh, a weekend this weekend, in fact, uh, of prayer. Of prayer. Let us let us pray. No to matter whomever you, no you matter pray your, to. Yes, no matter your your faith, <laughs> please pray for for rain. Oh my it's god. It's like, oh god almighty. Really? This yeah, is the so message. So stupid. So b- wait. Ah. Oh, why when I saw this did I not immediately tweet to the Satanic Temple to get somebody out here to do a prayer ceremony <laughs> right in front of the Capitol? <laughs> How did I not think of that till right now? It's kind of late in the game for it now. <laughs> Cuz then if it actually like worked, if there was rain, yeah, the Satanist Satan. could take credit for it yeah oh so perfect but it here's the thing guess what kids it's not gonna rain there's not gonna be rain there's literally like salt lake utah does not they get some rain in the fall some rain in the spring snow in the winter and then fucking nothing right in the summertime right but um you know when it when it doesn't rain does that mean there's no god right is that like it it is amazing to me because that conclusion never seems to happen right Right? nobody nobody is like well you know like literally everybody except you know a few were praying and it nothing happened 
Okay. Here's is it what we our fault because we're not praying? That's yeah, more likely right. where they would take it. Right. Here's what we need to do. We need to draft up a document in like state level government speak <laughs> that says, whereas Governor Cox called for a, a statewide day of or a weekend of prayer to, to for the drought, and yeah. whereas the drought has not yet abated, and whereas there is no fucking rain or aid in sight, and whereas God seems to want us to be in a drought, therefore we're not fucking doing this shit anymore, and we're going to actually like take real steps now. Yeah. Oh know. my god. I think they have to I think they should be required to admit when it doesn't work. Like it like I if you're going to call for prayer as an elected official, you have to you, acknowledge you have, when it like, didn't work. It, yeah, if it doesn't if the rains don't come after that, you have to like go on television and say, "Well, guess God doesn't want this, so we have to do some shit." And frankly, I wonder if that's what he's doing. Well, I wonder if he's playing the the Utah politics game of maybe I can rally them, maybe I can marshal them if I, I can say I started with magic. We well, tried the magic. Okay, I didn't. No. Okay. Huh, that's interesting because my thought was more along the lines of and and it, it has the same lead in that we had to this conversation, which is you can't get these people to listen to government on anything right, right? um so can i get them at least to, to think about the fact that we're in a drought and to acknowledge that oh, we're in smart. a drought yeah by just doing prayer right and then because then prayed. they're now 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 they've accepted there's a drought and there's there's something that we have to do about it oh he got and then he got maybe, buy-in from them and yeah, first you get them to buy in on their terms. And then as time progresses, it's a little bit more what you're saying without the full acknowledgement. It's like, so now when you're asking them, hey, you know, like, remember that that thing that we had to pray for for a whole weekend? Right. Like, we also, in addition to that, need to maybe water our lawns less. Right. Because you prayed, you admitted it's real. Exactly. You admitted right. it. So now because we I mean, all have to do a thing. Yeah. And I, I'm wondering if there isn't some psychology uh, about sort of the real kind of this kind of specific religious mind. Whereas if you if you can if you go at them first with, hey, these are the things that we need you to do from a civically minded perspective. Right. They'll they like, will never fucking do it. Never. Right. Because they do not think that way. I'm going to drink uh, extra water, you liberal <laughs> cuck. <laughs> Here's how I'm... Yeah, that's how you own the libtards, right? Right, Is exactly. You just, like, stand out in the street just, like, with your, your hose on. Yeah. You do a little selfie of just wasting water, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, no, all I, while you are wasting the only water we have. I just um, don't... I, I don't want to give Governor Cox that kind of credit. I don't but know then, if he's... But then... We, we don't have a beat on this guy yet. Yeah. I don't have a beat on him. If it turns out that he then, you know, in a week and a half or two weeks says, here are the steps we need to take. Uh, I might be. Well, I'm mm, mm, interesting. Is this how you manipulate religious people? It's That's what I sad. Mean. Yeah. It would be deeply sad, uh, but so brilliant. Yeah, because uh, yeah. Because they want to use magic. This is the problem. <laughs> Everybody wants magical thinking to be the solution to things. Right. Yeah. And I get it. We all would rather magic be the, the solution to our problems rather than us having to take concrete steps that mildly inconvenience our lives yeah. and maybe make our lawns look bad. But <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ, man. Uh, yeah, I think take some steps. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm that that'll be interesting to watch. We'll let you guys know if if he does actually start taking steps fairly soon. Uh, he uh, will, and I think he would. And I I, I don't know that that's going to be proof for me, right? Like, like because we have to take he has to start siding with concrete steps at some point, right? Yeah, well, you'd think so. It's but, a it's but, it's a an emergency. 
Yeah, I I think though the confirmation for me would be if you see Utahns starting to actually behave yeah. in, in, in on this issue in sort of a collective and and uh, uh, community sort of way. Right? Yeah, um, that would be because, amazing because yeah, it, I don't know what else is going to get through to some people. <sighs> but, I mean, we have All a right. really really poor opinion of our fellow uh residents here <laughs> it's it is a well-earned opinion they have worked hard for it and uh i'm going to give it to them <laughs> well kids uh send us water if you can oh uh, please dr terry i know you're up in the pacific northwest please uh if you guys can just turn all of your fans westward uh, to get some clouds <laughs> over here, that would be great. Or eastward, rather. We're east of you. Yeah, anyway, we're uh, east of there. If you guys have anything you'd like to talk about or uh, tell us why our governor is a brilliant man or an imbecile, please feel free to write into us, podcast at thankgodimatheist.com. Or call and leave us a voicemail message the telephone number is 424-666-8442 yeah go to the facebook page facebook.com slash tgi atheist click the like button then we'll capture all of your information and use it in nefarious ways that's not what we do that's true might be what facebook does but um (laughs) uh but uh also uh if you'd like to join one of our Two member on, members only lounges. Uh, you can go to our website, thankgodimatheist.com slash members only. You gotta type all that in. Uh, and it'll take you to a page with links to go to over to Discord or to the members only lounge on Facebook. Um, and they're great communities and yeah. uh, still growing communities. It's amazing. Super worth joining. Like that's that's actually genuinely worth doing. So so do that. Uh, thanks so much to the Red Rock Hot Club for the use of their beautiful music. And thanks to Gordon Johnston for the use of his music. And thank you to all of you, dear friends, for tuning in. We appreciate you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.